traditional method. What the traditional method does is this. Please, please watch carefully. I'm going to kind of explain it, give you an overview, and then I'll be much more specific as we go through the next section. Um, the traditional method does this. It says you look at your significance level, and that's going to give you, based on a left tail, right tail, or two tail test, your critical values, right? And it separates your rejection region, either two or left or right tail. And then you look at your test statistic and you see where it falls. You follow me on that? This way, the p-value method does something a little bit backwards. It says you're not going to worry about critical values. No critical values. It says all you have is your test statistic, and you're going to put that on your chart, and you're going to find out the area in the, in that particular, for that particular value. Then you compare it directly to your significance level. If it's smaller than your significance level, you know it's rare enough to reject the, the null hypothesis. So there's two ways of looking at it. Traditional has critical values, and you look where your test statistic falls. P-value says you take your test statistic, look up the area, which you guys are very comfortable doing, you've done that before, and you compare that area to the alpha. If it's smaller, you reject. If it's not smaller, then you don't reject. That's, that's the two options you have for hypothesis testing. You need to know both, uh, so I'll teach you both, because I'm going to ask you specifically for one method or another on your, on your test. All right? So you, you do have to know both of them. So I'll let you know there's two ways to go about it. Okay, so p-value. It's a probability associated with the test statistics, and I just, just talked about our decisions that we can make. Decisions, there's only, there's only two options. The decisions are you reject the null hypothesis if it's in the rejection region for, for the uh, traditional or if the p-value is less than the alpha for p-value method, or you fail to reject the null hypothesis. You can't ever accept it. Those are the only two options we can have. Only two uh, decisions, they're not really decisions, you don't get to decide, it's already decided for you based on the math. You just have to be able to do the math correctly. One, if it's in the rejection region, you are going to reject H of zero, the null hypothesis. Two, if it doesn't, if it's in the fail to reject region for traditional method, you fail to reject. In this case, if you reject H sub 0, you accept H sub 1. This one, if you fail to reject H sub 0, can you accept H sub 1 still? Remember, the, these statements that I have on the board, the H sub 0 and H sub 1, they're opposites. They're opposite statements, right? It means that if this one is, if you reject H sub 0, it means it's clearly false. If it's clearly false, it means this one's clearly true. If you fail to reject H sub 0, it means it's not necessarily false, but it's definitely not necessarily true. Can you say anything about H sub 1? Then you, you can't say anything about anything, then you're done. There's no decision on, on this. So if you reject H sub 0, you do accept H sub 1. If you fail to reject H sub 0, you don't know anything about your statement whatsoever. You know nothing. <laughs> Love that one. Can't prove it right, can't prove it wrong. You're stuck. Now, I'm going to put on the board what I was talking about just a minute ago, the traditional method versus the p-value method. Here's the difference, if you want to see it. Traditional method does this. It will take In your three possible options here that we talked about on the left-hand side of the board, it will take your left tail or your right tail or your two-tail test, and it will give you some sort of rejection regions here. With, of course, a negative critical value or a positive critical value or two critical values 
depending on your type of test. And what the traditional method says is you take your test statistic, look up here at the board with me, you take your test statistic, these things are not test statistics, they're critical values. You take your test statistic and you see if it falls in your rejection region. If it does, you reject H of zero. So I'll put up here, what we're doing is you are going to reject H sub zero, reject H sub zero, if the test statistic falls in the rejection region. Reject H of zero if the test statistic falls in the rejection region, it would be here, or here, or in one of those two spots respectively. P-value method is the opposite way of looking at it. They're both equally valid. There really is not a whole lot of difference between, well there's no difference in the mathematics, it's just what you're looking up changes. P-value method says this. You compare the p-value to your alpha. So what you would have here, based on your left tail, right tail, two tail test, you would have a test statistic. And you would look up that area. This area would be your p-value. That's a weird U. That area of your p-value, so notice how the pictures, they look very similar, don't they? Only in your traditional method, these are critical values. Here, you would have a test statistic. You, should, you could still have a right tail, a left tail, or a two tail test. But now you're looking up the area that's associated with your test statistic, that's a p-value, and then you reject your h sub zero if the p-value is less than <clears throat> or equal to alpha. You fail to reject H sub zero. If the p-value is greater than alpha. You see, alpha is your significance. It's how sure you want to be. So if our value, if our area is less than alpha, it says, okay, you, you, it's pretty, it's rare enough. It, it's rare enough to say that that's to support that, that with evidence. If it's not, it's bigger than alpha, it says it's not rare enough for us. It may very well be true, but not according to how significant, how important we want to make this statement. Would you like to do an example of finding p-values? Yeah. I was hoping that you would, because I have a plan, and if you, if you didn't, I, we'd be stuck. Actually, we do it anyway, so. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you understand the traditional method right now because we, we've actually done that. We did an example with it. Traditional method works like this. You find critical values. You already have a test statistic and you see where it falls. Do you guys have the, the traditional method down? You sure? Okay, here's the p-value method. Let's do a couple examples of finding p-value. There's really only three things we've got to do. Uh, firstly, again, you're going to have to determine whether it's a left tail, a right tail, or two tail test. That, that's important. Second thing, we'll actually find the p-value. Third thing, we'll compare that p-value to alpha. That's the three things you do here. So let's do, we'll do two examples. Example number one. Let's say that I give you your alpha. Your alpha is 0 0.05. Okay, so it's, it's just a 0 0.05 significance level. Uh, I say that your H sub 1 
By the way, do I have to give you an h sub 1? What do you think? If I don't give you an h sub 1, can you tell whether it's a left tail, two tail, or right tail, or right tail test? So do I have to give you an h sub 1? You get an h sub 1. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to tell what type of, what type of test you're dealing with. Oh, well, let's see how good you are. Let's see how good you are. Is this P a P value? Or is that P a proportion? Proportion. Are they the same? No. Oh, good. You get it. Yeah. P value is associated with a test statistic. That right there is, is a claim based on your proportion. I know that can get confusing because we have two different P's. But if it's an H sub 0 or H sub 1, it's talking about a proportion. All right? If it's not, if, if, you're, if you're looking up a, a Z score and you're getting an error, that's a P value. And let's say that we're not going to do any we're not going to do any work with this. So I'm just going to give you the test statistics that I found on my own. Okay. So you do all the work and you get a test statistic. Of z equals one point one eight. So you did the work on that. Would you like to see a comparison between the p-value method and the traditional method? Would that help you out if you saw the difference between them on this one example? Because you could do this both ways. I'll show you both ways if you'd like. Would you like to see that? Okay, so on the left-hand side we'll do traditional. On the right-hand side we'll do p-val. Traditional first and then we'll do the, the p-value method. The first thing you need to do in each case in each case, is determine whether you're talking about a left tail, a right tail, or a two tail test. So what do you think here? Are we a two tail test? No. Left tail test? No. Right tail test? Yeah. How can you tell? Yeah, yeah, you just look right here. Whatever that, 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 matter, that number doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. This number right here is already in your test statistic. It's already done for you. So the work's done. That doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that. That's telling you left, right, or two. You got it? So are we dealing with a, what was it again? Right. Okay, so in each case, no matter what, you're going to draw a picture for me. Both of these pictures will look identical right now. The difference is the way you go about it. In the traditional method, here is what you do. Please watch very carefully on the board because I'm going to ask you for both methods on your final exam. Here's the traditional method. Traditional method says you're going to take your alpha, you're going to look that up in the chart, which I had you do just a little bit ago, right? And you're going to say, say that this is a critical value of 1.645. Remember that number? Are you okay on where that number comes from? Okay. Because this alpha is 0 0.05. Remember that this is a critical value. This right here is our rejection region. Did you get me so far on the traditional method? This is old, old stuff. We've already done that before. Now you'd go ahead and you would compare your test statistic. What's the test statistic in this case? 1.18. Great, 1.18. It says test statistic, right? It's got a z-score. You, you know that, that still has a z-score yet. You're comparing two z's here. Compare 1.18 to your, your picture now. Is it in the rejection region or the fail to reject region? 1.18 is, it's over here. That's the fail to reject.